example, Bhutan e-learning project welcomes children to this lesson. I am Sumitra Subba. This lesson is a physics lesson from Key Stage 5 for classes 11 and 12. Today, I will be teaching you resolution of vectors and perpendicular components of a vector. In my last class, I have uh, taught you about the addition of vectors using triangles law of vector addition. There, we got a single vector from two given vectors. Now, do you think it is possible to have many vectors from a single vector? There is a process called resolution of vectors, which is just opposite to that of addition of vectors. In this process, we'll be getting two component vectors from a given vector, whereas in the process of addition of vectors, we got a single resultant vector from two vectors. So that's why they are just opposite to each other. So let's look at the definition of resolution of vectors. Resolution of vectors is the process of splitting a single vector into its component vectors, which when combined according to law of vector addition, produce the given vector. So this is the definition of resolution of vector. So is the process of splitting of a single vector into two or more vectors. But here we will be dealing with two component vectors. Let's take a vector R. As you can see, vector A and vector B. These are the components of this given vector R. As you can see here, this com two component vectors A and B and then the given vector R, they obey triangle's law of vector addition. The two vectors are in the same order and then the given vector is in the reverse order. So they form the perfect triangle and they obey triangle's law of vector addition. Now let's look at the rectangular components of a vector. When a vector is resolved into two components perpendicular to each other, such components are called rectangular components or perpendicular components of a vector. The component along x-axis is called x-component or horizontal component of the vector and it is denoted by Rx. The component along y-axis is called y-component or vertical component of the given vector and it is denoted by R. Y. Now let's look at this rectangular components of vector in the diagram. So this is a vector R. Now let's resolve it into two perpendicular components. This is the component along x-axis Rx and this is the component along vertical direction Ry along y-axis. As you can see here, these two components should form a rectangle and here the angle theta is the angle between the given vector and the x-axis taken in the positive direction. Now we have formula for calculating the magnitude of perpendicular components. Horizontal component for this we use the formula Rx is equal to magnitude of vector R times cos theta. So here this is the magnitude of the given vector and then theta is the angle between the given vector and x-axis taken in positive direction. Next for vertical component the formula is Ry is equal to magnitude of vector R times sine theta. Okay let's look at how we got the formulas for the vertical component and the horizontal component of the given vector. So as you can see here, this is a vector r. This is the given vector inclined at an angle theta with the x-axis or the x component here. So as you can see here, this is the x component rx and this is the y component ry. Okay, with that like this, ry. Now, let's take this triangle, 
triangle A, B, C. So since this is a rectang rectangle and the opposite sides are equal and parallel, so this side BC is also equal to RY. Now let's take this triangle ABC. In triangle ABC, let's take sine theta, trigonometric function sine theta. So as you know, sine theta is equal to opposite by the hypotenuse. Opposite here is BC and the hypotenuse is AB. BC is equal to Ry and AB is the given vector R. So let's take its magnitude. Now, if we cross multiply, we get Ry is equal to magnitude of vector R times sine theta. This is how we get the formula for the y component or the vertical component of the given vector. Now let's go for the horizontal component. Again in the same triangle ABC let's take cos theta. Let's take the same triangle ABC. Now if we take cos theta, now cos is equal to adjacent by hypotenuse. So here adjacent is AC. Adjacent is AC and then the hypotenuse is AB. So AC by AB. Let's substitute AC is AC is the X component RX and AB is again the vector R magnitude of vector R. Now if we cross multiply we get the formula for the x component or the horizontal component of the given vector that is rx is equal to magnitude of vector r times cos theta. Now let's solve a problem using this formula. A vector has a magnitude of 100 newton and it makes an angle of 30 degree with the x-axis taken in the counterclockwise direction. What are the magnitudes of its perpendicular? components. The quantities which are given in the question are magnitude of vector 100 newton and the angle theta that is 30 degree. We simply use this values in the formula. First let's calculate x component Rx. Rx is equal to magnitude of vector R times cos theta. So magnitude of this vector as given in the question is 100 newton times cos theta that is 30 degree. So when we calculate we get 86.6 .6 newton. Here value of this cos 30 degree you can easily get from your calculator. So the value of horizontal component of this given vector is 86.6 .6 newton. Now let's calculate the y component of the given vector. So the formula is Ry is equal to magnitude of given vector times sine theta. Again the value of this given vector is 100 newton times sine 30 degree. And again when we calculate we get the value of the y component or the vertical component as 50 newton. So this is how we calculate the magnitudes of 
the two perpendicular components of a given vector. Now let's see what happens to the perpendicular components of the given vector when we change the angle theta. As you can see here, when you change the angle, when you slowly increase angle theta, the direction and the magnitude of the given vector is also changing. As you can see from first quadrant now it is moving towards the second quadrant. Then it is moving to the third quadrant and then the fourth. Okay, as you can see here in the first quadrant when the given vector is in the first quadrant, the two component vectors Ax and Ay, they are along the positive direction of x and y axis. Here angle theta is between 0 degree and 90 degree. Next, in the second quadrant, the vertical component is still along positive direction of y axis but the horizontal component has now shifted to the negative direction of x axis. Here angle theta is between 90 degree and 180 degree. So when angle theta is between 90 degree and 180 degree, the x component of the given vector is negative and the y component is positive. Now you can see in the third quadrant both x component and y component they are negative. Here angle theta is between 180 degree and 270 degree. So when angle theta is between 180 degree and 270 degree both the components of the given vector are along negative direction of x-axis and y-axis respectively. As you can see in the fourth quadrant the x component is now positive and the y component or the vertical component is negative and here angle theta is between 270 degree and 360 degree. So these are the four possible values for the components of the given vector. It can be positive positive, positive negative or negative negative depending on the value of theta. Now let us keep the angle theta constant and change the magnitude of the given vector A. And let us see what happens to the two components. Now let us see what happens when we keep the value of angle theta constant and change the magnitude of the given vector a. So when you increase the magnitude of the given vector, see what is happening to the magnitude of the two components. They are also increasing which means the magnitude of the two components depend upon the magnitude of the given vector. So in this case they are directly proportional. Now let's see what happens to the component vectors when we keep the magnitude of the given vector constant and change the value of angle theta. When angle theta is equal to 45 degree, as you can see here, the magnitudes of both the components Ax and Ay are equal, that is 84.9, 84.9H. Now let's see when the value of this angle theta decreases what happens to the magnitudes of these two components. So as you can see when we decrease angle theta the magnitude of the x component Ax is increasing whereas the magnitude of the y component Ay is decreasing. Now let's see what happens when we make the angle uh, theta greater than 45 degree. You can see here the magnitude of the y component has increased whereas the magnitude of x component has decreased. Okay, so from here we can conclude that when we decrease the angle theta the x component increases 
and y component decreases and when we increase the value of angle theta to greater than 45 degree value of y component increases and the value of x component decreases so now these are the different cases of resolution of vectors first case here the given vector is in the first quadrant of the coordinate axis so both x component and y component are along the positive direction of x axis and y axis respectively and angle theta is between 0 degree and 90 degree so remember when angle theta is between 0 degree and 90 degree both x and y component are positive next when the given vector is in the second quadrant of the coordinate axis x component now becomes negative and y component is positive here angle theta is between 90 degree and 180 degree as you can see here angle theta is measured in counterclockwise direction from the x-axis the third case is when the given vector is in the third quadrant x component and y component both are negative they are along the negative direction of x and y-axis as you can see here angle theta is between 180 degree and 270 degree then the last case when the given vector is in the fourth quadrant x component is positive and y component is negative and the angle theta is between 270 degree and 360 degree so these are the four cases in the four quadrants of the coordinate axis let's look at uh, some examples of resolution of vectors from our day-to-day -day life we have our earth's magnetic field it has two components vertical component and horizontal component similarly when we sharpen a pencil we apply force at an angle to the pencil the component perpendicular to the pencil cuts the pencil and the component parallel to the pencil removes the wooden part of the pencil so in this manner we have many examples of resolution of vectors in our day-to-day -day life now let's recapitulate what we learned today we learned about the resolution of vectors perpendicular components of vectors that is horizontal component and the vertical component the formula for calculating the magnitude of the perpendicular components of the vectors and the different cases of the perpendicular components of a given vector now let's look at some questions the first one which of the following are perpendicular components of vector p so vector p is given to you so there are four options option a option b c and d so which option do you think gives you the correct components of the given vector the next question is find the magnitude of horizontal and vertical components of a velocity vector of magnitude 50 meter per second inclined at an angle of 30 degree with the positive direction of x-axis taken in counterclockwise direction so as you can see here the magnitude of the vector is given angle theta is given so you can find the magnitudes of horizontal and vertical components of the given vector thank you for attending this lesson i'll see you all in my next lesson